flight with him also. Can I say loud amen? amen. Alright, let's study. Isaiah 8 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. If the, if the studio will help us and then we are going to be very fast today. I'm going to, so that we can go into our communion service. I promise I'm going to stop at exactly 10 because I need to discuss with about two persons. Our intended protocol person, there's a training for you and then we need to talk. And all of our ministers have a short meeting with you immediately after, after service. Mm-hmm. Can I have somebody on the keyboard? Mm-hmm. As that chapter 8 and verse 18, read with you, very Christian, want to read. Behold, I am who? and the children whom the Lord has given me are for what? Signs and wonders in Nigeria from the Lord of hosts that dwells in what? In Manzano. It's a month of the supernatural, like I told you. We started a heart in, we, we started our study this way. That is a month of the supernatural. So this morning I'm going to be speaking to you. Operate the supernatural. Operate what? Let me do a bit of recap of all that we have studied ever since, ever since this month began. The supernatural is not a is not uh, is our is the supernatural becomes our natural life if you are born of God. Please pay attention to this. Back of the things we are looking for. It's simply because we don't know what, the value of what we carry. We don't know the worth of what we carry. And that's why we become a victim of issues that we are not supposed to be. He said, I and the children that the Lord has given me are for signs of wonders in Israel. From the God who dwells in Mount Zion. Let me say this. Supernatural simply means superior to the natural. Supernatural simply means what? Something superior. Divide that word into two. Is actually superior to the natural. The super before the natural simply means superior to the what? To the natural. So, the supernatural is real. And I can show you, the supernatural is real. I can show you from scripture, supernatural encounters and experience. I can show you in scripture, supernatural intervention. And I can show you supernatural life in scripture. Let me show you this. Supernatural experience. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1. If we can be very fast to you. Matthew 17 and verse 1. Supernatural experience. The supernatural is real. We saw in scripture people who have supernatural experience. We saw in scripture people who have supernatural encounters. So we can validate that supernatural is real. There is something that is superior to the natural. There is something that is superior to the natural. To the, to the natural. Amen. Matthew 17. He said, after these six days, Jesus, Jesus takes... Peter, James, and John and his brother and bring them up into a high mountain apart. Can we be very fast? You are moving faster if you can be very fast. Verse 2 now. And was transfigured. Somebody say transfigured. So it say transfigured. He was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his remnant was as white as lightning. What happened? They only went to a high mountain and when they got to that mountain, what happened? The Bible recorded, he said there was a... Now, many of us call this story the story that happened at the month of transfiguration. Yes. It was actually a supernatural experience. God coming to encounter Jesus Christ on that mountain. And then the Bible recorded that the clothes he went there with becomes lightning. Became to become white as lightning. And then his face become changed. His face become changed. He was still living in this super, he was still living in this natural habitat, but he had a supernatural encounter that be, before them that they could not deny. And then behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Look at this. Jesus was still here. He was not crucified then. He was not dead. But he had an encounter. Which is actually the supernatural encounter. Which is actually we can call the supernatural experience. To validate that the supernatural is real. He actually could see into the heavens. And then the heavens come to actually meet with him on that mountain. He says become transfigured. His garment became changed. And then, the, and then Moses that was dead long ago came to him. Elijah that was dead long ago came to him, and then they began to discuss with him. Look at this. I wish there is time to actually talk about what really happened at the Mount of Transfiguration. One of the things that happened on the Mountain of Transfiguration is that what the law could not deliver. Moses actually came by the law. 
A Elijah, what the prophet could not deliver, they come to actually hand over to Christ so that grace could deliver. I wish there is time to actually talk about this. So Moses could have actually delivered the people by law, but the law failed. The prophetic will have actually delivered the people through Elijah, but he failed. But the grace of Christ came to deliver people. So and that was why there was a supernatural encounter. Supernatural experience. God can, look at this. God can bring the prophet of hold that has ever gone ahead of you to come meet with you if God has actually have an agenda for your life. That, oh, let's not, don't worry. Don't, you get, don't worry. Let's, let's continue this one. All right. And if you will, let a, a Peter speaking here now. He said, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Move further now. And why he here spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. A bright cloud. I used to supernatural experience here. I used to supernatural encounter here. Can I pray for someone if you hear me will be louder than that of your neighbor. There will be a visitation in the supernatural before the end of this week for someone here. If I say name, let your hear me be loud and clear. And say, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am what? I am well pleased. Look at this. Move further. He said, Hear him. Stop here. That supernatural experience brought about the ordination of Christ. That you don't need to doubt where Jesus come from. He actually come to validate that this is my son. Let me tell you this. Supernatural experience come to validate your source. If you genuinely are of God, supernatural experience come to validate the source where you come from, and then it brings you to a realm of dominion. In that realm of, in that realm of dominion, you could speak. See, if you never have supernatural experience, human being will not obey you. The heart of man is designed to be wicked. The heart of man is designed to be wicked. There are somebody look at and they has worked for 365 days, and then look at one young man and said, I'm pushing money to you. Everybody needs money. It takes something for somebody to be selfless on your part. Human beings are not stupid. And look at Jesus. Even Jesus could not escape this. Jesus needed the supernatural experience before he can have that dominion and that authority where people listen to him. Can I tell you this? Without the supernatural experience and an encounter, nobody will hear you. He said, hear him. Hear him. Hear him. Hear him. I know there are many persons in this church. The reason why they are connected to us is not because they like me. I know. It's simply because they know there is a value I can render. I know many persons that I've met in my life. Oh, you say, uh, I don't like your kind of person. But nevertheless, I can't deny the fact that there's something around you. No, oh, I can't deny this. I can't deny this. Maybe I should start behaving like somebody everybody should like. But that's a realm of compromise. I was speaking to one of my friends abroad one time. He's a pastor and then was telling me, he said, you need to learn compromise. He was speaking to me, he said, it was a video call. He said, you need to learn compromise. It is actually a system in leadership where you need to learn compromise. I said, no. Where you have supernatural experience and encounter. Not many persons like Jesus. But there is actually an authority over him that you, like, that you hear him. So you don't have a choice but to hear him. So we can have experience. This proves that the supernatural is real. We can move to a realm where we have an encounter or an experience in the supernatural. I love this one. There's this, there's this supernatural encounter I love so much. He talk about the one of Stephen. That Stephen could stand in one place and then will look at the heavens. Now, there are some things if I begin to say now. You will think I'm mad and I'm not. Many of you will even doubt there was one day I told you we were praying in church. And then we were praying. I gathered some few brothers those days early in the morning. Not, nobody was staying in church. It was the old church then. So I gathered some few brothers and then they were coming every day. 5.30 to 6.30. 5.30 to 6.30. I remember mama was pregnant that time and then we would come to church very early. 5.30. Carlos, keep We were praying and then we were praying for open heaven. And then we were praying for open heaven. And then anytime I lead prayer. Anytime I lead prayer. Or anytime I'm, I'm actually have anything to do around the altar i do it with the heart of duty but nevertheless i i make sure this message personally i'll go back and listen again so that anywhere the pastor say you will have an encounter this week i will say amen myself you know why you can be operating under the influence of the anointing 
to actually minister to people. All the preparation I've made now, God told me because he knows that some of you will have a need. And I'm coming here to meet the need of others. If my need must be met, my faith must be actualized also. So while we're leading that prayer, I was facing, I was faced to the wall. Shekata, brakoskita. My eyes was closed. My two hands was lifted. I wasn't faking it. Zamotala, ekapradiaka, etiahinta. They were praying their prayers. I was praying mine. I felt like a tap. He said, turn, and I turned. And by the right hand of the door of the church, I saw a being. I saw like this was like this was discussed on the month of transfiguration i saw a being with a glistening white clothes i could not see his head i couldn't see the head but i could see the hand i could see the hand the hand there as oh these two hands as oh and they were fresh like a fresh wound it was actually the being was standing at the right side i immediately i knew it was jesus i couldn't see the face i couldn't see the face but the, the garment was white Grisling as it was, very white as whatever you can think the best of white. You know, God is light, God is not going to speak. Whatever God wants you to hear, just looking at God is communicating because light communicates without noise. Light communicates without what I wish there's time. Now, look at this. And God said, Do you want the heavens to be open? I heard Jesus, He said, Sing this song, and the heavens will be open. I, that was the very first time in my life I wrote a song. I've never been to choir before. I've never been part of any music band. I don't know keys. I don't know anything, but I wrote a song. And I remember if I want the heavens to open, I sing that song. Like I, sing, I, I sang that song in church and the heavens began to open. I know somebody who were actually staying in one room and then God began to open the heavens. They began to buy properties. They began to. I remember a lot of those people in church whose hearts were genuinely connected, were having some shit. When I saw that these things work, somebody will call me for prayer somewhere. I'll go to the place. I will need and write there heaven open in the name of Jesus. I'll sing the song as Jesus delivered me, and then things began to happen. Oh, I said this thing is working. I then I kept the song. Without a supernatural experience or an encounter, your voice will not be heard. Can I say, man? This, okay, I will be very fast. So the supernatural is real. Can I show you a scripture? I love this so much. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1 to 5. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. I love what Paul said here. Hey, Morosi, Vrandela, Matiskite. Can I pray for someone here? You are traveling also. Amen. Not to abroad right now. You are going to ascend into heaven. So that's what I'm talking about. You are ascending into the heavens. Can I say amen? Ascending into what? Yeah, into the heavens. You know, how many of you know that it's possible to actually travel to the heavens and come back? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been praying of God to do that once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. I was praying with some brothers here, maybe a few of them were here. One night on Friday night and then we were praying. And they were praying too. Some of them were holding pole. Some of them were, ish, ish, ish. as if they forced them to pray. But some of us who were actually doing the prayer, I was in front here. Yata, Yerakiski. Yata, all that I know that my tongue began. I, well, I remember that my voice, my tongue became altered. And after that, my voice became altered. I began to speak one language I did not understand, and I fell in travel. All that I saw, I have not communicated to anyone till now what I saw in that experience alone. And when I returned, I said, ah, and I met some of them still playing. Yeah, yeah, kaba, yeah, cha -cha, yeah kaka. I said, ah, you are still here. You are still here. A few of the brothers were one Odun was there that day. This brother was there. I, will, I can begin to point some of them. I said, you are still here. So none of you went anywhere. These things are real. Now look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's read. He said, for it is not expedient for me that let's lead to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Paul speaking here. Move to the next verse. Verse 2. He said, I knew a man in Christ about, 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 about 14 years ago. About 14 years ago. What kind of uh, King James is this one? Anyway, we will manage it. Whether in the body, whether in the body, I cannot tell. Move to the next verse. And whether heart of the body, I cannot tell, that knows such one as caught up in the what? Read now. In the what? Such one was caught up in the what? The question is, how did Paul know that somebody went to the third heaven if he has not been there? If you are a genuinely prayerful person, and then you have ascended before, when we meet, we know. 
Yeah. Strife is not always in their heart. Because you cannot attract. Whether in the third heavens, yeah, then you caught up in the third heavens. Move. We'll, we'll stop at verse 5 if you can be very fast. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but God knew it. Move. How that he was caught up in the into what? Another one was one was caught up in the third heaven, one was caught up in paradise, and yet they are still alive. So it is possible to travel. This is called supernatural experience. This is called supernatural encounter. Did you see you are not ordinary as you think? How many of you have heard of witches flying in the night before? That they say witches fly in the night. Okay, how do you travel to heaven so if you are not flying? They copy it. The original is the one with us. The fake is the one that they are manipulating. You can fly. You can travel. There is a wings of the spirit. You are not as ordinary as you think. The reason why little things are pulling you down is simply because you have allowed the hands of the devil to manipulate your heart against the things of God. Look at he said, was caught up. He said, he went to paradise, right? And heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Anyone who travels here, their experience is always very difficult to share. Like what I had that night when we were praying together, I have not shared with not even my wife. I have not shared not even my wife till now. What validate this call? It's not what you understand. I make my boast in the Lord. What validate this call? That has never made us to shut down at once with everything that's ever fought us. It's not what you understand. Even the heart of some of the men is just to gossip and then look for what I'm doing wrong and then say some nonsense behind. He said, Pastor, did this. You are looking for who to judge who. There are unspeakable things in the supernatural experience. And of such one which I glory yet of myself, I will not glory but in my, what? In my infirmity. Yes, there are infirmities around you for you to see. But you can't deny he has a supernatural experience. And you don't have a choice but to hear him. Can I hear him? Alright, let's move from that one. The supernatural intervention. I just proved you that supernatural is real but supernatural experience. The supernatural what? Intervention. Can I show you quickly, very fast, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 and verse 15. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 and verse 15. There's something called supernatural intervention. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 and verse 15. So the supernatural is real. We can judge that by supernatural experience and encounter. We saw supernatural also, supernatural intervention. That there is actually an intervention that is above the natural. That whatever be the situation around your life, you can actually have an you can actually have an intervention, intervention that is above the natural. You can get, you can actually engage things. Think about this. There are many persons who have gone to many of you have watched it in movie before. That you will need something from Annapolis, and they will tell you, bring goats, bring cocoa, bring this, bring that, and they will slaughter the thing. They will do it and an incursion. And then, have you not seen where people say some few things and some people run mad? These people are not using the power of God. So that means they can actually engage something to bring out an intervention to which they desire. So if the devil can be that, can look as if they are coming come to magic, how much more the hand of the living God that is actually the supernatural. Think about this. He said, in as much that I in as much that they brought forth sick the sick into the street and lay them on the bed and the couches. Move further. Move further. That at least somebody said, at least. So to say at least. Shout to me say at least. How many of us are in church? Say at least. He said that at least the shadow of Peter passing, passing might overshadow some of them. Move to the next verse. Eh? He said they have actually seen an intervention above the natural. People were sick. The place to carry sick people to is the hospital. How many of you agree with me? Is to go and look for a doctor. But they could see the hand of God in the life of Peter. That there is an intervention that is above the natural here. So when when people were sick, what did they do? They only would line them up on the road where, where it will pass. And then Peter would just come. And then Peter did not know them. He did not know the problem they have. He does not know the problem. He doesn't know the name of their sickness. All that they need is that 
Why Peter is passing, the shadow will only fall upon the people that are sick. And the Bible recorded, he said, there are also multitudes of the city around and then Jerusalem bringing forth sick, continuing our sick foes. He said, them which were vexed with unclean spirit, that is mad people. Look at this. I said, they were what? They were all yield every man. What yield them? Only the shadow of Peter. How do you want to explain this? Somebody said supernatural intervention. So you are just walking. Only for the shadow to just fall on them. You didn't need to shout in the name of Jesus. Foul spirit, come out. I've seen people who negotiate with demons. How many of you are inside? 17.4. He said you are the legion. Come on one by one. I call you by fire. I've never cast out a demon. Not even somebody that is mad. Not even somebody that is mad. And then begin to entertain the devil. Say so come out one by one. What nonsense. I carry light. If the shadow of Peter could actually heal the sick and people with unclean spirit, people that are mad, shadow only fell on them. How, why are you negotiating with the demon? It's a realm of disrespect. Your ass girl will slap you, you will slap back. Is, it, is, that not, is that not it? It's a realm of disrespect. Where you can only give a command. When your shadow alone by the Holy Ghost can come upon people that were sick and yet they will be healed. Supernatural intervention. Can I prove for someone that you are getting there? Yeah. Oh, you don't believe this. You are getting there. Yeah. I know a woman who was not selling in Duse had a shop and then came to me and he said, I've not been selling. It was on a Tuesday. I went, I remember I went, I was passing and then branch a shop to greet. He said, I've not been selling. Oh, he said, this week I've not even sold anything. Last week was very terrible. And then, and I removed my slippers inside. I remember, I, was, I remember the Power slippers I was wearing. So I removed my slippers and I put my leg on the floor and I said, In the name of Jesus, say now in Jesus' name. So I left. That was on Tuesday. By Friday, the woman rushed to church. He said, Ah! Ah! She, has, she brought money to me. He said, This is the kind of thing I've never recorded in my entire life. The question is, there are, inter there are supernatural interventions. An intervention above the natural, validating that God is real. Can I say amen to that? Number three, there's supernatural life. There's what? So we can trace that the supernatural is real by validating that there is supernatural intervention, there's supernatural experience, and there's what? There's supernatural life. John chapter, John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse 1 to 10. John chapter 10 and verse 1 to 10. If you can be very fast, studio. Studio, if you can be very fast. John 10 and verse 1 to 10. There's actually supernatural life. There is a life in the supernatural. There is a life above the natural. There is a life far, 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 far more than the corruption of this world. There is a life. There is a life. There is a life. You are not ordinary. There is a, there is a life. He said, very, very, I say unto you, now he that enter not by the door into the sheepfold, continue, and climb back up some other way, came me as he kept the same is a thief and a robber. Move to the next verse. But he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of who? That's why Jesus will knock at the door of your heart. He will not. That's why Jesus will not force himself on you. He will tell you this is the provision I have for you. You believe him, then he manifests. You don't believe him, then he leaves you. It's not a thief. It's not a robber. He will not climb into your heart. He will not override your own will. He will only knock. Coco, coco. Do you want money? He said, I don't want. Okay, he locked the door. Can I say? He said to, to him, the potter opened it. And the sheep hear it. And the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name. And led them out. Move to the next verse. And when he put it forth, his own sheep, he went before them. And the sheep followed him. For they know his what? His voice. And a stranger will they not follow. But we flee from him. For they know not the voice of who? Of strangers. This, parada, this parable, Jesus spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not when, they understood not what things they which, they were which he spake unto them. Please, let's use that translation. This one is speaking, speaking. Alright, let's move to the next verse. And he said unto them, again, very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Move to the next verse. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But sheep, calm down, calm down. You should be reading so that you. But the sheep have not listened to them. Move to the next verse. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters through me will be saved. Whoever, whoever enters through me will be saved. But they will come in and go out and find pasture. Are you seeing a life here? A life in the supernatural? The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have what? Life. And have it what? And have it what? And have it what? Can James sell abundance? And have you sell in full? There is a life of the fullness of God, which is a life of the supernatural. In John, in John chapter 1 and verse 14, is it 14 now? Can we go to John chapter 1 and verse 14 down to 16? John chapter 1. Use the King James. John chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. There is a life in the supernatural. Let's be very fast. 14, yes. He said the word became 14. He said, and the, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory. Move to the next verse. And the glory as of the holy begotten son of the father, full of what? Grace and what? And truth. Move to the next verse. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he whom of whom I spoke. He that he that cometh after me is preferred before me. Move, move. For he was before me. Move. This way I'm going. Say with me. And of his fullness. I've all received. Grace for grace. Is this, is this. The life that Jesus brought. Is, is a life of his fullness. That is full of grace. Grace for grace. I've traced that life is actually qualified for supernatural experience. That life is actually qualified for supernatural encounter. That life is qualified for supernatural intervention. So the supernatural is real. How many of you agree with me now? The supernatural is real. All right. And let me say this. Like I said last Sunday, I'm just doing a recap. You are a supernatural being. So with me, I'm a supernatural being. The Bible speaking, it says, he that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. You are born of the spirit so you are a spirit being so you are a supernatural being anyone that is born of God is a supernatural being it's not an ordinary being and you have the mind of God I said that last Sunday you have the mind of God which is actually the fountain of the wisdom of God ability to be able to discern between that which is right or wrong because the mind is actually the seat of wisdom and then when you have the mind of God you are a spirit being you are a supernatural being and that notwithstanding you carry the presence of God you carry the what? So, if there's a supernatural experience, there's a supernatural encounter, there's a supernatural intervention, there's a supernatural life, and yet you're a supernatural being. We need to learn how to operate in the supernatural. Can I say amen? And this is where I will stop. Number one, how do I operate in the supernatural? You need the revelation knowledge. You need what? This is where I'm going to stop. You need what? There are three things needed. And I'm going to be very fast to deliver these three. Number one, you need what? Revelational what? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 to 18. You need revelational knowledge. The knowledge of this world is good. But the revelation of God, the revelation of the knowledge of God is key. You need revelational knowledge. Yes, he said that the God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, move. Might give you, might give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Look at verse 18. In the knowledge of him. He said that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. Move. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of inheritance in, in the saints. Stop here. There is a, there, you will need revelational knowledge. Not the kind of knowledge that is available anywhere, but the kind of knowledge that is available in the Christ. He said, Paul praying here. He said that your highest of understanding will be enlightened and you will know. You know why? We know why there are many contention in the body of Christ. It's simply because many people lack revelation. If you are truly revelational in your, if you are truly revelational a Christian, it will show in your character and behavior. It will show in your disposition. We are having courtship with mama we never kissed. No. I'm on the altar of the most high God. No fornication. No fornication on credit. I know something. I know without any doubt that having to bring about sexual, impu sexual impurity will actually damage some things. 
There was a lady I also got married to that time, and then the lady was doing one thing. I said, Come, I can't be seeing all these things you are opening, I'll be seeing vision. No, please, no, no. There is already a limit over your marital destiny. Now, God is merciful, but God will never use your marriage as a template when there is a lot of sin. So you can't operate in the supernatural when you are not ready to embrace supernatural knowledge. You can't operate in the supernatural. You can't talk as a supernatural being and be able to silence the hand of the devil when you are not. That's why Paul said, he said, I'm praying for you that God will actually give you the wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him that you'll be able to know. He said that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened and you'll be able to know the hope of his calling and the riches that is attached to being associated with Christ. Nobody will pray the supernatural without deliberate conscious revelation and knowledge. You can actually operate in the supernatural with just listening to Facebook, listening to comedy, choosing life after everybody chose life. No. Think about this. The revelation and knowledge, talk about the revelation and knowledge in the context of our finances, for instance. Okay, think about this. Revelation and knowledge in the context of our service. He said, No, I'm not paid. Nobody pays my transport. I can go to church. Anyway, I own myself. No, sir. If you have revelational knowledge, you will know that your service is to God. And let me tell you this. If you are not faithful in which is another man's own, you can never, God will never hand over your own to you. Are you, are we together now? So it takes revelational knowledge to actually be dedicated and committed even in the Christ. Nobody will serve the interest of the kingdom of God without revelational knowledge. So you can operate in the supernatural without what? Revelational knowledge. Revelational knowledge is actually the spirit of God coming to reveal to you the realm behind the logos of scriptures you are not thinking after another manner of this world you are actually you are wired to actually operate the mind of god revelational knowledge will actually fuel the mind of christ in you you will be able to operate in the wisdom of god that is the wisdom class of god let me tell you this one day i was praying somebody offended me and then the offense got at me so bad this thing happened this year some months ago about four months ago, I can't remember. Yes, about four or five months ago. Somebody offended me, one of the boys, I think one of the boys hanging around me, then, offended me and the team, pained me so much. So in the middle of the night, I was praying. So I step out, and it was in front here. It was just outside here. This is our car park. So I was strolling in the night around 3 a.m. I, I came out around 2 a.m. there about, I was strolling around 3 a.m. I was just praying. But the burden of that offense has not left me. That burden was still there. That burden was there. And I said, oh God, would you just help me? He said, I will just pray. I, I know it's difficult to forgive, but I, I forgive. Let this young man be. You understand? I don't want you to even judge him. Let him be. Just clear this thing off my mind so that I can pray. And, God, and, God, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, young man. He said, stop treating people for what you are. Teach them for who they are. That's how to operate in the class of God. Ah, pay attention to this. Now look at me, everyone. Say amen. Are you in church? Revelation and knowledge. He said, treat people for who they are, not for who you are. He said, that's how to operate in the class of God. I had God clearly. I was close to the gate. He said, treat people for who they are, not for who you are. Who you are is kind of emotional that you want to see everybody good. But there are many persons doing good to them as make you to even frustrate them. I remember a young man, God helped us to do a lot of things for. One of his uncle called me and he said, the, what the parents could not do to him are the things you have done to him. And the young man messed up the whole opportunity, gave us a lot of headache and then he pained me. One day I did like this and God told me I didn't send you. Because if you have left that boy to suffer, he will have learned better. He's not even designed to operate at this frequency. So that's why he did not understand. I, I understood immediately that the best way to manage people is teach them for who they are, not for who you are, so that you can preach in the class of God. Think about this. Anything you want from God, you have to tell him first. It's not because God does not know your need. He's actually operating in the class of God. Are you? Are we together? Yes, revelation and knowledge. So it takes revelation and knowledge to operate in the supernatural. Can I say amen? Number two, I told you three things. We are closing now. Number two, is somebody blessed this morning? Number two is far above mentality. Far above what? Go to 21 of this scripture. Far above what? So it will be far above mentality. So it will say far above mentality. Don't let me look at you and I'm not talking. So it will say far above mentality. All right. Look, look at verse 21. No, let's read from verse 20 of this scripture. Verse 20 of this scripture. 
He said, which you wrote to Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead, and then I set him, say with me, I set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Move to, move to verse 21 now. He said, far above principalities, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Look at this. He said, by this revelation and knowledge, there is something superior. He said, he has set Christ above principalities and everything that is named. Everyone that believes, genuinely believes in the Christ and operates in, and operates in revelation and knowledge, he is seated right, he is seated right where Jesus is standing. He's sitting, sorry. Because he's in us, we are co-here with him. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. So you are far above all principalities, all powers. Are you following this now? And everything that is named even in this world, but also even in the world to what? To come. Look at verse 22. The last verse there. He said, and has put all things under where? Under where? Everything is under the feet of the Christ. Are you with me? And gave him to be the head over all things, even to the church. How many of us are part of the church here? Do your hand here. This is a house of judgment. Because everything is under the feet of Christ. So we can name anything. Anything. So we have a, we need to operate in that kind of a mentality to actually operate in the supernatural. Everything is under the feet of Christ. And that's why everything answers to the name of Christ. You need money in the name of Jesus you get. You need healing in the name of Jesus you get. You need a wife in the name of Jesus you get. Whatever you need you get in the name of Jesus. Why? Because everything is under his feet. He's seated right at the heavenly places. Seated at the right side of God. Where principalities and powers are right under his feet. And he has actually wielded that authority to the church. I'm not voice in church. Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. So in the name of Jesus, we can actually command any change. We talk about we are supernatural beings, and yet we need to operate the far above mentality. The far above what? How many of you know a witch is a witch is better than you? Do you like this? You see this? How many of you know you are better than a witch? Say amen. Yeah, yeah. Don't just only believe it, operate it. There are no witch, no witch, no witch. I was watching TikTok one day, and then one man. One man was doing a life broadcast, and the woman, and the man wrote there, "I am a witch." He said, "Consult me, I will do sorcery." So I joined the I joined the life. And I asked the man, I said, "I want to consult." He asked me, "What do I need?" I said, "I want to know, are you a witch?" The man did not reply. I said, "I want you to answer me because I want to make consultations." I want you to answer me. Tell me if you are a witch. The man did not reply. I said because I've read in scripture that suffer no wish to live. I want to kill a witch. Let me see if the scripture is true. I said answer me now. Are you a witch? The life ended. How many of you will see a witch and yet you'll be, you have that far above mentality to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? How many of you can stand any oppression of, this is who you are. This is who you are. Stop looking like a dummy as if you need help. The help you need is in you. Unto him is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. There is a threshold in you because Jesus is in you. Everything is under your feet. The church is not a beggarly church. We are a church of authority. Somebody shout hallelujah. You need this far above mentality. Far above mentality. Far above. She could not, he could not answer me if it was a witch. I told you this funny story before. I used to stroll in the night to pray. When I was staying in those days. And then I was strolling one night. And then I saw one man carry one calabash on his head. Elderly man. Elderly man. You know why people who serve idol make their brain is always dull. Idol. Idol. Is that correct? I what? I do simply means you are dull. I do. I, I do. So it will make an elderly man around 2 a.m. carry one big calabash on his head, tie one black thing around his waist, and he was chanting something, coming from that under bridge of Zuba, put it on his head, and he was coming. And I was strolling. And most times when I'm praying in the night, and I'm strolling in the night, I always close my eyes because there's no car to disturb. 
no car, no bike, so you can be trekking. And yet, so I closed my eyes and I was praying. Sometimes I open your eyes. So I open my eyes. So I saw the man with the calabash on the head. With the calabash. And I was doing something. Uh -uh. If, it, if it is some of you, what you have done, somebody say far above mentality. I know this one is under my feet. I'm not supposed to be afraid of this one. You see, if you understand this far above mentality, you will not be afraid of demons and devil. The reason why they scare you with some few things is so that you will be afraid. And the moment you are afraid, they will get you. You need this far above mentality to operate in the supernatural. You know what I did? I changed gear. You know, I was praying gently before. I changed gear. Kata! Kakuski! I wasn't praying. Again, I had to stop the prayer. So I had to raise my voice for the guy to know. I had to make a sound. Shekateka! And I, I ding my dangolin against Zuzuzu. And I faced the guy direct. Shekato! Kiyato! Kaka! The guy ran like this. Ran with his calabash. With his calabash on his head. He ran. He ran. I don't know. Maybe they told him not to look back. The guy looked back and looked at me. With the calabash shaking on his head. One madness you see no one. You know some of you when you see that kind of person in the night. Carry one thing on his head with one black thing almost naked. What will you do? Some of his only lizard you saw in your dream. You are doing three days vigil. Far above mentality. Far, far above mentality. Some of his only uh, what's the name of this thing? Uh, uh, walk ago that you see. You've declared seven days vigil. You are nowhere. You are nowhere. You can a demon should not tell you the time to pray. A demon should not actually determine the time you should pray. You are not even praying, you are praying your fear. It's only fear you are praying. Ah, kaka. All the animal. Some of you, I was praying one night here inside this compound around 4 a.m. And then I was closing my eyes. The Lord told me, Open your eyes. So I opened my eyes. As I opened my eyes, I saw one big cat very close to that way, very close to where those children used to play at the back there. The cat was just sitting down there, was looking at me. Ah! Okay. I wanted to be sure what I saw. So I went inside the office. I picked torchlight. And I, as I picked torchlight, I do on the high. The thing ran. As the thing ran, and I was praying before and I was struggling, kind of. The struggle ended. There was a flow. There was a flow. I never pray against it. I only say, look at me face to face. There's something in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What the devil wants to do is for you not to think it. It's for you not to act it so that you can be oppressed. The Bible said they know not. Neither did they all understand. They die like men. Have I not told you that ye are gods? Ye are gods. There is a life in you, not just this ordinary life. It's a life of the supernatural where everything is under your feet and you need to operate that kind of mentality because as a man thinketh in his heart. So is If anybody tell you, say which, ask the person, are you truly one? He said, why are you asking? Because the Bible says, suffer not a widow. So in the name of Jesus, I want to kill you here. Number three, faith. Number three, what? And I'll stop here. In Mark, in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. In Mark 16, and I'll stop here. You want to operate in the supernatural, you need to be a man of faith, not a man of doubt. Will he walk? Will he not walk? No, no. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Ah. You see? You are not ordinary. You are a spirit being. You have the mind of God who carry the presence of God. You are not ordinary. You are praying in the revelational knowledge with a far above mentality. And you are a genuinely man of faith. You can command anything. Read with me one, two, read if you're in church. He said, This sign shall follow them that who? Only those that believe. If I was afraid, you see, I don't know why the Lord wants me to tell you this. One night I was praying also, and I was strolling. You see, when you pray in the night, you see many, many nonsense. And those things are just meant to distract you. Don't get distracted. Because you can get scared by them if you're not operating this thing. I'm honest. For some of you who pray in your room, you're doing well. But if God can help you to stroll a little bit in the night, you will see things. One night I was praying, and I've all, I've trekked from Duse to, you know, when you pass that uh, the bridge that that goes to that Echo Bank. If you pass that bridge a little, you want to start ascending. You want to start moving to the road that enters that uh, Phase Three Junction. Uh -huh. So I was on that road where those where those car dealers are selling cars. So and I was walking by this side of the road, in the middle of the road, because of those trucks in the night. So I used to walk in the middle. 
in the in the middle of the road, the road here, the road here, you know that grass part. That's where I walk in the middle of, because of those truck. They can lose control and all of that. So I was trekking. I said, on my part, I saw one man, elderly man, was wearing a sleeveless clothes, white, with a trouser white. And then there was a cap on his head with a mirror. And then there was mirror, 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 mirror here. And then he had some wristband, all this demonic uh, wristband and all of that. And he fell down right there and saliva was coming out from his mouth. The way he was dressed, I know he was flying before. Because with that dress, I know... So I know maybe the person was flying to go and attack. That person was praying. So he fell down. You know, when witches are flying towards your direction and you're a man of prayer, they fell, they, their flight will, their flight will fail NG and they will crash. That, they call it crash landing. So the man, why the man was actually trying to from the man's mouth. So I carried torchlight. I put it on the face of the man. I said, you see how the devil is mismanaging your life. You see? You're an idiot. Even your guy, foolish. You see? The man was looking at me. I said, don't worry. If I come back here to meet you, I'll beat you. So I continued my prayer. So I was coming back around 4.30 a.m. The man was still struggling there. Ah! I said, you see, the devil is mismanaging your life. But I'll, I'll beat you. I won't beat you. Mm. So I will have you for cane for you. And why are you here this night? Yeah. Go are you. So that you won't forget in a hurry. So I insulted the man very well. You are still doing like this. I left how many of you will see somebody with a devilish incantation kind of stuff and yet you have that far above mentality that greater is it that is you that is it that is in the world. Let me tell you this. These signs only follow them that believe. Not those that doubt. Not those that are afraid. These things, and you know something? This thing cut across your business, cut across every, Let me tell you this. If the devil can be silenced over your work, over your business, you will go for in life. Bulk of the contentions we have is actually fueled by demons and devils. I've seen people, the reason why they are not promoted is because the devil is after them and yet they can't go far. I've seen people before that they only sat in the office and they become crippled. I've seen people before they sat in their office chair and then they lost their mind. If you can operate far above mentality that is actually born out of the revelational knowledge of God and you operate in faith because you are a spirit being, can I tell you something? There is a I can guarantee you every area of your life will be settled. Because any, any, once a challenge comes, you already know what to engage. That wonderful name. Say Jesus. Say that wonderful name. Sing if you are Christian. Say Jesus. Oh, that wonderful name. Oh, there is no other name. I, I love the man of Galilee, of Galilee, for he has done so very well. He has forgiven me all my sins and sinned. I love the man. Can I ask you a question? If everything is under his feet and his name commands the authority, why are you defeated? Why are you what? If everything is under his feet and that name is the authority that you can engage to get anything, then why are you defeated? Why? Why? Why are you taking no for an answer? When you press and get, you don't get it. Let me tell you this. There is no, there is no intervention. Let me say this. Bishop Edoko said, miracles is actually the hand of God provoked by the deliberate faith of man. The supernatural is provoked by you when you need it. God is always supernatural. Your faith is always there. The day you need it, the day you get it. I was thinking of something yesterday. Yes, I was. I went to do say yesterday after some few things. I just decided to stroll, and then I was going to do say. And then I was thinking about some features around church. I said, "Why am I not thinking like this three years ago?" And God replied to me. He said, "It's not that you are ready. That's now. We'll not do it for you." So I was thinking. Say, what I, I now start? It's like I wanted to start caning myself. What was I thinking three years ago? What was I thinking four years ago? Why have I not been thinking like the way I'm thinking now? 
You know what? Don't take no for an answer. You can fix the date of your wedding and you'll get it. Men are not scarce. The wind of the spirits can bring anything. Yeah, the wind of the spirits can bring anything. 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 And I can guarantee you it's true. The wind of the spirits can go forth and bring anything. The day Jesus needed money was the same thing. He said, He told Peter, He said, Go to the go to the sea. Cast the first hook. He said, The first sea you will, you will pick. He said, Remove. He said, Open the mouth and you'll find the coin. Come and pay tax for me. And you. The day Jesus spoke was the same day the fish that carried the coin to ran to the net. Anytime God speaks, everything hears. Anytime you speak, the heaven is also in that attention. That's why the Bible says you shall decree a thing yell on earth, and it shall be what? Established in heaven. You are not ordinary as you think. How many of us want to command change this morning? You can hand that sickness right now with authority in the name of Jesus. You can hand that delay right now with the authority in the name of Jesus because you are speaking from a reign of the supernatural where what you speak is even confirmed and backed up by heaven you will decree a thing right here and heaven will stand at attention to say what you say I approve rise to your feet lift your two hands I like you to, I like you to use the next three minutes and address one issue around your life you are not an ordinary being you are a supernatural being address that issue that sickness needs to go right now that disappointment and failure needs to go right now yes that mentality of evil needs to go right now that oppression of the devil needs to go right now engage that name everything is under your feet everything is under the feet of the Christ and you are going here with Christ is somebody speaking right now Casco Vrande La Hanteka Ela Koski Te Bronde La Kaski Te Zuzata Ela Cambodia what is it that is impossible what is it that I've said is impossible there is no impossibility with God there is no impossibility with God, there was there is no impossibility with God. Ela koski tamrande la kaski tezun tala hande ikabande kakoski tezun tala pole kande la hata. Ela kopo diama engage in the spirit. Engage in the spirit. You have two minutes to go. Ezante la pole diama si ya no wicked don't cook and kill you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No demonic oppression can silence you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No witch can stop your marriage. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No one can stop your joy. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Ekuskim prahande kalatita elakande kapro diyata. No gothic oppression can silence you. Is that how you pray? Is that you engage in authority? Is that the best you engage? in authority is a camper like a decoski hat here theater yes you are i must feel no man i like a man no man i like a man yes you no man i like a man Yeshua, I must see you. Oh, man, I love you. And that you are not an ordinary being. You are a supernatural being. Sickness is under your feet. Barrenness is under your feet. Failure is under your feet. Disappointment is under your feet. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your howl is now. Your howl is now. Your season of celebration. Your howl is now. Your job is coming. Your job is coming. In the name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus and tell hand they go in the public as we are there. There is no impossible with God. He said, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You are engaging the supernatural God, you are a supernatural being. Engage authority in the name of the Lord. <laughs> There is 
an overflow in his house. The Spirit of the Lord is coming now. There is an overflow in his house. The power of the Lord is moving now. Oh, never has he come to your heart. Yeshua, I'm a seer. name of Jesus. Lift your two hands out everyone. Mighty rushing with flow. It's your two hands, everyone. Flow, flow. The Holy Ghost is going to flow through you right now. You're going to have an experience in the supernatural. You're going to have an encounter in the supernatural. There is a supernatural intervention coming to you right now. The pain is going. The glory of the Lord shall be mighty. The joy of the Lord shall be mighty. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who will say the loudest amen right now. Receive the resisted gate turned around in the name of Jesus. Let the sick be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. We we'll silence every yoke of distraction against your destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have your seat one minute. The Bible said, whatever name Adam called them, that was the name they answered. Adam, in the, Adam as a supernatural being in the garden.